This problem is going to look at the solution for the initial velocity of a giant catapult throwing a pumpkin a distance of 750 meters in the air. And so there's a few things that are given to us in this problem. First, we're estimating that the pumpkin is thrown at an initial angle of 35 degrees with the horizontal. We're also assuming that this pumpkin is being released from a height of 10 meters above the ground. And finally, we have that the pumpkin travels 750 meters in the air before it reaches the ground. This problem is going to involve breaking the initial velocity into components, then going through and setting up an equation for the vertical motion and the horizontal motion. But both of these are going to have unknowns in them. So we're going to have two equations with two unknowns that we're going to go through and use to solve for that initial speed. The first step is to break the initial velocity into x and y components in terms of the given angle. We can do this using sine and cosine. So we get that the x component of the initial velocity is the unknown speed v0 times the cosine of 35 degrees. We get that the y component of the velocity is v0 times the sine of 35 degrees. And we can find these numbers on a calculator. The cosine of 35 degrees is 0.819. The sine of 35 degrees is 0.574. The next step in this problem, because we're looking at two-dimensional motion, is to set up the columns for our horizontal motion and our vertical motion, listing all of the kinematic quantities. So we have in the horizontal direction, it's starting at a horizontal position of 0 meters, and it's ending at a horizontal position of 750 meters. The initial x component of the velocity is what we found before, 0.819 times the unknown speed v0. The horizontal acceleration is 0 meters per second squared. In the vertical direction, we have that the starting height is 10 meters, and that the ending height when it's at the ground is going to be 0 meters. We have that the y component of the initial velocity is 0.574 times the unknown speed v0. And we have that the y component of the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And so we can see that in this, we don't have enough information to use our kinematic equations to solve directly for v0. Because we don't know the time, we're going to have to go through and set up two equations with two unknowns. And we're going to get those two equations from our horizontal and our vertical motion. So first I'm going to set up the equations for the vertical motion, looking at the vertical position as a function of time. And so looking at the vertical motion, looking at the height as a function of time, we have that the final height y equals the starting height y0 plus the y component of the initial velocity v0y times time plus 1 half times the y component of the acceleration times time squared. And so now we're going to go through and we're going to plug in those quantities from our vertical column. So we have that 0 equals 10 plus 0.574 v0 times t plus 1 half times negative 9.8 times t squared. Next, I'm going to do the same thing for the horizontal motion. And so for the horizontal motion, we have that the position as a function of time equals the starting position x0 plus the horizontal component of the velocity times the time. And again, the third term, the 1 half at squared term, is 0 because the horizontal acceleration is always 0 as long as there's no air resistance. So plugging in the values that we had from our horizontal column, we have 750 meters equals the starting position 0 plus 0.819 v0 times t. And so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using these two equations and we're going to be using substitution to be able to solve. We're going to take the horizontal motion, we're going to use substitution to solve for t by itself, and we're going to substitute it into the other equation for the vertical motion to eliminate t out of the equation. So using the horizontal motion equation, we had 750 equal 0.819 v0 times t, and so solving for t by itself, we divide both sides by 0.819 v0, and we get that t equals 750 divided by 0.819 v0. To simplify this a little bit, I'm going to take 750 and divide by 0.819, just to turn that into a single number. 750 divided by 0.819 is 915.75. And so we have that t equals 915.75, divided by v0. Again, v0 here is not the x or the y component. That, that's our total speed of the object. And now we're going to take that quantity and substitute it in for t into our vertical equation. And 
and the next thing that we can do is we can simplify this a little bit. In our second term, we have a V0 in the numerator and a V0 in the denominator. So we can divide that out, and that's going to turn into just a number. Also, we're going to take that final term where we have t squared, and we're going to make sure that we square the numerator and square the denominator. Again, squaring a fraction requires you to square both the numerator and the denominator. And so again, the simplification of that middle term, 0.574 times 915.75 is 525.64. And then in the final term, a half times negative 9.8, that's negative 4.9. And then 915.75 squared, that's the numerator squared, equals 838,598. And then in the denominator, we have V0 squared. From this step, we're just going to be going through and simplifying and solving for V0. So in the first step, 10 plus 525.64 is 535.64. And then in the second term, negative 4.9 times 838,598 is negative 4,109,130.5. Then we still have the V0 squared in the denominator. So in the next step, I take the term that has the V0 squared over to the left-hand side of the equal sign. Taking it to the left-hand side makes it positive. So I have 4,109,130.5 divided by V0 squared equals 535.64. I'm looking for V0, so I need to get the V0 squared out of the denominator. So the next step is going to be to multiply both sides by V0 squared. On the left-hand side of the equal sign, V0 squared divided by V0 squared divides out. And so now we're left with 4,109,130.5 equals 535.64 times V0 squared. And so finally, to solve for V0, we're going to divide both sides by 535.64, and we'll take a square root. So first, dividing by 535.64, we have 4,109,130.5 divided by 535.64. Again, I rearranged this. Because we're solving for V0, I put that on the left-hand side of the equal sign. And so dividing that, we get 7,671.44. And so finally, to solve for V0, we take the square root of both sides, and we get 87.59 meters per second. So this means that to throw the pumpkin 750 meters from a height of 10 meters in the air at a 35 degree angle, you must throw it at 87.59 meters per second. Again, this is going to be a fairly large velocity because 750 meters, that's seven and a half football fields in the air. But again, this is a good problem to go through because it involves setting up two equations with two unknowns and using them to solve for the initial speed of the object.